why was it so terrible to live during the Middle Ages? In today's video, we will be exploring why it was so awful to live during those times. Before this video begins, just wanted to tell you to subscribe. That's it. Enjoy the video. Birth was a rough undertaking back then. There was a lot of risk involved with bearing children, and there wasn't a guarantee that the child would make it out alive. There was a 30% mortality rate in newborn babies. So, if a mother had seven children, only five would make it past infancy. If the child was lucky enough to live, that doesn't mean the mom would be as fortunate. Because of the higher child mortality rate, moms had a lot of kids to compensate. Getting older can also affect the health of a woman, which can raise their chance of dying while in labor. Because of poor education, only one out of the seven kids that the moms gives birth to will learn to read and write. Poor sanitation in cities was a major problem back then as well. There was irrigation, but it wasn't widespread. It definitely wasn't used to get rid of fecal matter from the poorer parts of the city. It was used mainly in agriculture and drinking water, so citizens would use the running water to get rid of the crap. But the running water would mix the crappy water, and boom, you got cholera. Another factor was us humans living very close to animals. They spread diseases like Q fever and ringworm. Because of these illnesses, humans of the day would just kick the bucket because there was no right treatment for them to be rid of these sicknesses. If these sicknesses were contagious, then it would spread like wildfire and kill loads of people. The reason it would spread so fast is because people lived in very close proximity of each other, which leads me to my next point. The reason people lived really close to each other is because there wasn't fast travel for the majority of citizens. The rich had carriages that were faster than walking, but the whole city can't be based off of the rich minority. Your average farmer walked to where he needed to go. So, they couldn't build a gigantic wall that was hundreds of miles in diameter. But the reason I mentioned small cities and board travel is that you never really left your village. Because traveling was so expensive, most people would stay in a small town for their entire life. And because there weren't any highways spanning entire continents, traveling even the shortest distance was a big challenge for even the rich. Besides the very rich, the two reasons you would be able to leave your town would be educational or religious reasons. Yes, moving is also a modern luxury that we take for granted. It just wasn't possible for families to relocate if the leader of the city was a crappy one. You would either deal with it, or try to rally up the people to dethrone the leader. But let's be honest, it's you and maybe 10 other dirty, disease-ridden, disgusting peasants versus 100 Ultra Omega Pimp Daddy Knights who have had at least 10 people killed because they didn't like the look on their face. So, you tell me who's gonna win that fight, sister. Back then, the main system of government was monarchies, which means one dude decided every law that would be passed. He would lead battles, engage in trade with other cities. He could tell you, a starving, helpless peasant farmer, that you have to fight in a deadly war. And because the kingdom doesn't have infinite money to supply every farmer with the proper gear, our friendly farmer would fight in leather cloth and with his farming tools. Knights in shining armor did exist, but weren't the majority of people in battle. This would not be something planned either. The housing wasn't that great either. There would often be dirt and pebbles on the floor, so walking barefoot in the house wasn't really an option. If you had wood paneling as floors, then you would be subject to splinters. So, they can't walk barefooted either. Now, if you were lucky enough to live in a city house, then you would be inside the city walls. The size of an average medieval home was around 200 square feet. Now, for comparison, the average size in an American home is 2,000 square feet. You also have to remember that there were more people in each family, so if there are four people for each family house that is 2,000 square feet today, there would be nine people for each family house that was 200 square feet, so each house was much more crowded than the ones of today. If you felt ill or you were injured, then you would go under pre-industrial surgeries. Now, if you know anything about pre-industrial, then you should be feeling the withdrawal symptoms very soon. But the key aspect you have to understand about pre-industrial surgeries is that they suck. The most common procedure done was something called bloodletting. Bloodletting is when they find a big vein on your body and cut it. They would have blood leak out into a bucket. This would occur from a red fountain to droplets coming out of your neck. The thing is, is that this is made way worse for the patient. 
Leaking blood gets rid of white blood cells, which actually helps bacterial infections. On top of this, it wasn't always a doctor doing this. People would walk into the barber shop to get the two-for-one deal for bloodletting and a haircut. Yes, really, barbers actually did this. And don't look up how they treated kidney stones. You don't want to know. Now, after watching this video and hear me list the reasons why the Middle Ages sucked, you wouldn't be surprised if I told you that the average lifespan for someone in that p time period would be around 30 years. If you are in high school, you would have already lived half your life by now. Living in the Middle Ages was hard. Life was brutal, disgusting, and short. But we could be thankful that we were born after that. And we reap the benefits of the development of human technology in society, especially the subscribe button. Leave a like if you enjoyed, dislike if you didn't, and I'll see you all next time.